Uh, data is a strength-based dynamic information flow analysis tool for x86 uh, binary. First, I will start uh, by uh, talking a little bit about uh, information flow analysis. Dynamic information flow analysis monitors the flow of information between object, variable, or instruction in a program at runtime. It was originally used uh, for security purposes uh, to track, uh, to determine a leakage and uh, tampering. Flow strength quantifies the amount of information flow between instructions or variable in a program. What I have done is I have uh, implemented a tool that uh, supports strength-based dynamic dependency analysis uh, for uh, x86 binary. And I have used uh, that tool to introduce some correlation-based technique, uh, such as a data value predictor and indirect branch predictor. Uh, I will give some uh, brief description related uh, to program slicing. Program slice is a set of program statements that may affect the value at some point of interest. A dynamic slice is a set of program statements that actually the value assigned to a variable at a specific statement for a particular execution of that program. An assembly dynamic slice is a set of program, is a set of assembly instruction that actually affect the value assigned to a register or memory location at a specific instruction for a particular execution of a program. Now we'll talk um, about the information flow and strength of dependency. Information flow occurs from an instruction to another instruction during execution of a program. If observing the outcome of instruction two at some point reduces one's uncertainty about the outcome of instruction one at an earlier point, which indicates that instruction two is probabilistically dependent on instruction one. The strengths of dependencies measure the amount of information they propagate. Uh, we ha I have used the three techniques to measure uh, the strength of uh, dependency. I've used the standard R or Pearson R, uh, which measure linear association only. And I've used eta coefficient and normalized mutual information, uh, which measure both linear and nonlinear association. Uh, I've used the instrumentation in my work. What's the instrumentation? It's a technique that inserts put into a program to collect runtime information. What I have here on the right is uh, simply we are interested in uh, counting the number of dynamically executed instructions. Uh, I have used PIN. PIN is uh, a dynamic binary instrumentation supported by Intel. Uh, PIN does not uh, need the source code, uh, no recompilation, no post linking. Uh, it provides rich APIs that allow the user to write instrumentation tools that are called PIN tools. It's supported on x86, x86, 64, and Itanium, uh, and uh, for both Windows and Linux. Uh, and it instruments real time, uh, real life application, and multi threaded application and apply compiler optimization on instrumented. Now, this is uh, the tool that I have uh, written. Uh, first, I provide several options for the user, uh, like uh, is the user interested in skipping certain number of instructions before starting implementation? Uh, is a, uh, what, what, what are the number? Uh, is the user interested in specifying a specific number of instructions uh, to instrument? Uh, like, uh, are we interested on uh, specific routine? Are we interested on specific type of instruction? Uh, are we interested in only uh, dependencies where the target of the dependency are of specific type or dependency where the source of the dependency are of specific type? And many other options. First, uh, we instrument uh, the executable. Then we execute uh, the instrumented executable, and we log uh, information that we collect about the dependencies. The second step is we quantify the strengths of these uh, dependencies. 
uh, and we categorize them. Some of the instruction you notice that they are constant outcome instruction. This means instructions that are always taking the same values. And for the other instruction, uh, we qualify, we, uh, we classify them like are we having dependency from the instruction to itself? And is this, is it a linear dependency or nonlinear dependency? Are we having dependency between distinct instruction and also they can be either linear or non linear? Some of the uh, application in which I have used the tool is related to uh, data value prediction. Uh, we have uh, like uh, in, a, in any program, we have what's called the name dependency, control dependency, and data dependency. Here we are interested in data dependency, which is also called true dependency uh, or uh, read after write. Uh, data dependency occurs when an instruction depends on the result of a previous instruction. Uh, long latency uh, instruction, a can be either of uh, variable latency such as uh, load instruction or fixed latency uh, such as uh, multiplication or uh, floating point uh, addition. Uh, data, uh, data dependent instruction will stall behind long latency instruction, potentially creating one or more critical path in that program. Now, what when we apply data dependency, uh, data value prediction, it's a technique that predicts the result of an instruction and uh, proceed uh, with the execution and fetching. And at the end, uh, if uh, the result of the pred uh, prediction was correct, uh, we commit instruction. And if the prediction is wrong, we flash. Uh, we flash the uh, instruction that were speculatively executed. Now, uh, what I have done is uh, using uh, my tool, I classify instruction. First, I classify, okay, this instruction, constant outcome instruction, and this constant outcome instruction, we can predict them using last value predictor since they are always producing the same value. And for instruction that have self-linear relation, this means uh, we have linear relation uh, between the uh, consecutive outcome of the uh, we predict them using local linear predictor uh, and for instruction that have distinct linear relation so we have a uh, linear relation between distinct instruction we predict uh, the tar uh, the instruction of interest using global linear predictor the advantage of this work is first i am identifying highly predictable instruction and select the appropriate predictor to use uh, so uh, and also this can reduce the required hardware computation and achieve high prediction accuracy. And we can decrease the destructive impact of aliasing when it's preserved. I have also uh, applied uh, the tool for indirect branch prediction. Indirect branch specify where the address of the next instruction to execute is located. The address to be jumped to is not known until the indirect branch instruction is executed. Indirect branches can incur a significant fraction of branch misprediction overhead, even though they remain less frequent than the more predictable conditional branches. Indirect branch instruction implement multi-way branch statement and virtual function called an object-oriented uh, programming. What we do here is we identify the last instruction that update the source operand of an indirect branch. We call this instruction the source instruction of the indirect branch. For indirect branch instruction that are not highly predictable using a regular BTP technique, uh, what I have done is to access the prediction table using a value obtained by hashing the instruction pointer of the predicted instruction with the outcome of its source instruction. Now here I'm moving to some other question. Are dynamic dependency generally indicative of measurable information flow? First, I was talking, okay, we have dependency. Then I say we quantify the strengths of the dependency. 
Now, my question is, okay, I have dependency. Does it mean I have measurable information flow? And to answer this question, I have used two small C code. I have this for loop and I have here these two lines and this for loop and here I have uh, a modulus. Then I'm going to show another example where I replace the modulo with a multiplication. And this is a corresponding assembly for this uh, for loop. And we are interested in the instruction that update the value of X, the value of A, and the value of Y. And I label them instruction 1, instruction 2, and instruction 3. Now, I, comp I, comp I compute the strengths of the dependency. And what we notice here between instruction 1 and instruction 2 and instruction 1 and instruction 3, the strengths of uh, the dependency is 0 0.46. Here I have used normalized mutual information and normalized mutual information will give me strength of dependency between 0 and 1. 0, this means there is no dependency. 1, this means we have strong dependency. We have uh, complete dependency. How can we interpret this? Now, learning that the outcome of the instruction 2 is 0, an observer is not absolutely certain of the outcome of instruction 1 since it might be 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4. So what I'm saying here in this example, this is instruction 1, the x, and here instruction 2, the a. So if we have, instruct, if I know that instruction 2 is 0, instruction 1 might take 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4. And this is also the similar case between instruction 1 and instruction 3. However, between instruction 2 and instruction uh, 3, if I know the instruction, uh, the value of instruction 3, I can tell with 100% accuracy the value of instruction 2. Now, if I modify the example as I have said before and replace the modulus with multiplication and redo the same thing, we notice that the strength of the flow between all of these instructions is going to be 1. Now, how, what we can conclude from this, uh, from these two small examples, we can conclude that the presence of dynamic dependency between two instructions is not a sufficient condition for the strong flow of information between them. Now, uh, another thing is uh, when I was doing this work, I noticed that uh, when I compute the strengths of uh, dependency, I noticed that good percentage of these dependencies have zero strength flow. And what I mean by zero strength flow, I compute the dependency using my three techniques, uh, Pearson R, Eta coefficient, and normalized mutual information. And the value obtained is equal to zero. Uh, so I say, okay, it's good to analyze this. And also, can we make use of this zero strength flow to enhance instruction level parallelism? Just uh, to give you some uh, percentage for self linear, uh, for self, uh, for uh, dependency between an instruction and itself, 30% uh, of this uh, dependency have zero strength flow. So all of the dependency between instruction and themselves, 30% of them uh, give me uh, zero, uh, uh, the strength of the flow is zero. For dependency between distinct instruction, 90% of them give me uh, strengths of a flow equal to zero. So what can we conclude from this is the existence of dynamic dependency between two statements is not a sufficient condition for the outcome produced by S1 to influence the outcome produced by S2. Since we are, okay, we have noticed we have dependency, but the correlation between the values, there is no correlation at all between the values of these two statements or these two instructions. Now, uh, I come to the question, can we make use of this zero strength flow to enhance instruction level parallelism? And what I have done, okay, I say, I am interested now in dependencies between distinct instruction where the, uh, the strength of dependency is zero and the source of the dependency is a load instruction. And what I have done, okay, I, uh, 
I see the predictability of the source uh, of the flow, which is node instruction, and the predictability of the target. You notice that 40% of the selected node instruction are highly predictable, while 86% of the target of the flow are highly predictable, and this 86% account for 30% of the totally dynamically executed instruction. And here what we conclude is holding a highly predictable target instruction from execution since it's connected via zero strength flow with a non-predictable load instruction can negatively impact the execution performance. Uh, this is uh, all what I have uh, for today. Uh, thanks uh, for attending. Uh, the tool is available at this link. Uh, I have here uh, the source code and within uh, the coming few days, I'm going also uh, to provide uh, a user guide for the tool uh, that uh, initially the user guide will provide some instruction about how uh, to run the tool. And uh, later on, it's going to provide uh, some uh, detailed information uh, that go beyond uh, the information that are provided uh, in the paper.